Hi, my name is Dave Ulrich. I'm a professor at the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan and a partner at the RBL Group. As we look at the field of HR, we see an evolution in the thinking. HR began in the 1930s and 40s, and so this is time, and it focused on the administrative systems of work, managing the processes, managing the terms and conditions of work, labor contracts. HR then began to shift to a set of HR practices. And a lot of the focus was on staffing and training and compensation. And how do we do these practices, succession planning, organization design, in an effective way? Then in the last 15 years, they've been linked to strategy. So we had some very smart people in the organization design field, in the HR strategy field. Can I look at strategy and in that mirror begin to create my HR systems? We think the next step in HR is to go outside. Not just to look at strategy as a, as a mirror, but as a window. And to say, let's look outside the company and begin to see how we can do our job better. When we go outside, we go to customers, we go to investors, we go to communities, we go to government agencies, and HR becomes a lever for those external factors. That's the direction, that's the focus that we see HR headed. How do we do HR from the outside in? And that outside-in focus means that we have to begin to understand the administrative work, the practices, the link with strategy, but we then have to connect it to the external factors. That's our question. That's our challenge. How do we do that? When we look at that logic, we say to make that happen, what we have to look at are a set of criteria. And we think there are 10 criteria that we look at in building HR. I'm going to overview these quickly. They're in a book that HR Magazine put out last year on ebook um, around are we there yet? We now have a stress test. The first criteria is does HR add value? Are we focused on HR from the outside in? Are we focused on HR in a way that will shape and create value for the company? That means we don't look at HR in terms of what we do, but in terms of what we create for other people. The second criteria begins to look at the context in which we work. Linda Gratton and some other wonderful and, and dear colleagues have looked at the context of work. What's the setting in which we do our work? We like to talk about social, technological, economic, political, environmental, and demographic trends. Those trends should be a part of what we think about. Because if we're going to create value from the outside in, I and HR need to be aware of the context of that work. And Linda's work and our work has begun to define what that context is. Third, we need to look at the stakeholders who we serve. Those stakeholders can be inside the company. Clearly the employees, the organization, linking HR with strategy. But they also should be outside the company. Are we doing HR in a way that serves our customers, our investors, and our community? And the stakeholder model of HR forces us to go outside. For example, we've done some work looking at HR through the eyes of the customers. We've begun to say good reward systems are not good because they have internal criteria. They're good because the customer gets, through the incentive systems, the behaviors that satisfies the customer. We don't want to just be the employer of choice. We want to be the employer of choice of employees our customers would choose. That outside-in view. We're now doing work with investors. We are now going to a number of investors. We've done interviews. We've done a large survey. We're doing focus groups. What do investors want from the HR world? And we're trying to figure out that investor perspective. The same could be true of communities. Question one, do I understand HR value creation? Do I understand the context in which my company operates? The, the country, the, the industry, social, technological, economical, political. Do I understand and link HR with stakeholders both inside and outside? Then number four, five, and six. What will HR focus on? When an HR person sits down at a table with a business leader, what's the conversation he or she will have? We believe there's three things. One is individual. And the individual is about talent. Will I help my company have the right people? Will I have the right talent? Will I have the right systems to sustain and build talent? 
in the field today, talent is a big part of human resources. In fact, some have said you're the chief talent officer, you're not human resources, and HR is all about talent. We believe that talent, this is the individual, this is the organization, is a key factor, but we believe it's limited. If all we do in HR is build talent, we've missed a key piece. We also have to build, number six, the right organization. Organization is how the talent works together as a team. It's the culture or it's the capabilities. It's what we're good at. And we found in our work that there's a couple of key capabilities we have to be able to master. We have to manage innovation. We have to manage service. We have to manage collaboration. We have to manage efficiency. And we can identify what do we need as an organization's identity that allows us to succeed. The test I love to use is interesting. In sports, what percent of time is the leading scorer in the World Cup, the one who wins the golden boot, on the team that wins the World Cup? What percent of time is the best athlete on the team that wins the tournament? And the answer is generally 15 to 20 percent. In basketball, in American soccer, British football, in almost every team sport, in hockey, the talent 15 to 20 percent of the time will succeed. 70 to 80 percent of the time it's the organization. And if I'm in HR sitting in a meeting, I say, do we have the right talent, competence, commitment, contribution, and do we have the right organization? And the integrator is leadership. Do we have the right leadership? By leadership, we mean not just the individual leader, but leadership deep inside the company. We've just had the privilege with HR Magazine of doing another ebook with Norm Smallwood and I, and we've said leadership has a set of dimensions that we can see. One part of leadership is doing the basics well. We call that the leadership code. Here's the basic things every leader's got to do. Generic. The other part of leadership is what we call the brand. Do we have differentiated leaders? Do the leaders in our company separate themselves from somebody else? And now we're trying to say the next step in leadership is sustainability. Do we actually sustain the change in both individual leader and collective leadership behavior in the company? So, let's go back. I'm an HR person. As I look out to the future, what do I need to be aware of? Creating value in the outside, not inside. I've had some people say, boy, that's not new. Well, it is new. We've had HR often focus within the walls. We say, who are the customers of HR? And the answer is often the employees. Part right, part wrong. How do I create that value? I understand the context of business. Where do I focus? Where do I live? I understand and serve the stakeholders for my company, my customers, my investors, my communities, as well as my cap organization and, invest and uh, employees. What do I then focus on? When I'm in HR sitting in a strategy meeting, what do I deliver? What do I contribute to that discussion? We've had a story told, an HR person got invited to strategy. They were all excited. The first, um, first strategy meeting was, what do we do to do business in Asia? And he said, wow, that's a business issue. I don't have much to contribute. Second strategy meeting. How do we innovate products faster? Wow, that's a big issue. I don't know what I'm going to say. Third issue. How do we manage our capital costs and our capital structure? Well, I don't know what to say. Fourth meeting, not invited. In any of those meetings, now there's three things we would advocate you say. Do we have the talent? We're going to Asia. What talent issues are required? How are we going to do business in Malaysia, in the Philippines, in Vietnam? What are we going to have to do around talent? Where do we find them? How do we promote them? How do we pay them? What do we do about organization and culture? How do we build the right culture? How do we build the right DNA? What capabilities do we need to do in China? That relationship culture, the ability to collaborate between government and industry. And fifth, or fifth, the other one, leadership. What do we need to have as leadership? I now can say that's what HR sits and contributes. Now, how do we do that? The final four questions. Question seven. Do we have the right HR department? What a great question. I struggle today. How do you organize HR? And in the struggles to organize HR, there's two choices that come out. Do you centralize or do you decentralize? One option is you centralize HR and you have a single head of HR with functions reporting to that head. Staffing, training, compensation, benefits, OD, org development, reporting to the head of HR. The other is you decentralize, and you put an HR department with that structure in every country or in every business unit. We find 
or the third option is you do both. You have some kind of shared service organization or matrix where you do a combination. Here's what we have found. The way you organize HR should be linked to the way the business is organized. If your business is centralized, HR should be centralized. If your business is decentralized, HR should be decentralized. If it's a combination, it should be a combination. A lot of people have misallocated that. Um, we have found that about 20% of businesses are centralized. Government agencies, single agencies, small companies, single product businesses, they're centralized. They shouldn't have a complicated HR structure. Other businesses um, like Virgin uh, in India, Tata in the United States, Berkshire Hathaway, they're pure holding companies. That's probably 10%. But somewhere between 65 and 70%, 75% of companies have a shared service or a matrix organization. Those are the companies where the HR department finds multiple roles with a common purpose. You there have a center of expertise with great knowledge, the specialist, you have embedded HR people, the generalist, and you have the administrative support. They work together in an integrated way to deliver value. We organize our HR department. P, we invest in our HR practices. We've identified four buckets of HR practices. One is around people, staffing, training, development, career management, moving the flow of people. One is around performance, rewards and compensation. One bucket of practices is communications. And one is around work, which includes facilities, organization design, managing the workflow. Those practices need to be aligned with the outside customer and investor. They need to be integrated with each other, and they need to be innovative. Third tool is the people in HR. Do our HR people have the competencies to do our work? We are now into sixth rounds of studying competencies for HR people. And we know what does it take to be a good HR professional. And in the last data set, we have a set of data of the skill sets for HR. That will continue to emerge. And finally is analytics. Do we measure our success? Some people put measurement first. I like to put measurement last because it quantifies and informs the decisions we make. That's it. The future of HR has 10 criteria. Ask yourself how well you do them. Number one, am I focused on creating value more than activity? Do I focus on my receivers? Do I know who they are? Number two, do I understand the context of my work setting? Do I understand the external social, technical, economic, political criteria. Number three, am I connected with stakeholders inside the company, the employees and the, and the organization, and outside with customers, investors, and communities? Number four, do I bring insight and knowledge and action to the talent equation? Can I help my company have great talent? Number five, can I build great leadership? Can I make sure that our leadership team at the top and throughout the company is superb? Number six, can I create the right organization? Can I create the right set of capabilities and culture that help us go forward? And finally, number seven, do I build the right HR department? Have we put our HR resources together in a way that delivers value? Number eight, have I aligned, integrated, and innovated my HR practices? Org design, one of the key practices, staffing, training, compensation, have I integrated? Number nine, have I invested in my HR people? Are we taking care of ourselves? And number 10, do I have analytics and metrics to track what we do? I've been asking this short clip to give you a view of the future of HR. We've written a paper on this called Are We There Yet? It basically has a stress test. We've now written another paper on leadership and are we there in the leadership state that we need to be? Because when we do those things, we in HR contribute value to the company. And not only to the employees inside, but to the customers, investors, and communities where we live and work. For the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of being a part of this HR profession. We have grown. We have expanded. 25 years ago, we would have talked about change a practice here or there. We might have talked about change the HR structure. We might have talked about get our HR people better or measure. Now we begin to see the flow of how that fits together so that HR is, in fact, a true contributor and a partner, if you will, to the success of a business. What a great profession to be in. HR Magazine, professionals in Europe, in London, 
um, in the United States, Latin America, Asia, Australia, around the world in the UAE have been so helpful at teaching us how we build HR to deliver value. If you would like more information, we have a website, www.rbl.net. That website highlights some of the work we've done, and we hope we can continue to contribute with you and make this profession even stronger in the future. Thanks so much for your time.